Bases Loaded was released in the arcade in Japan in 1987, and a year later saw a release on the NES. There's no MLB license, so the teams are based off random cities, some of which have never had a Major League Baseball team, like Utah, Hawaii, Omaha, and Kansas. No, not Kansas City, just Kansas. There are only 12 teams in the game, and a third of them have teams in these locations. Nothing against these regions of the country, of course, but the major markets really should have had first dibs. I mean, there's no Chicago, for Christ's sakes. The players are all fictional, too, sporting names like Bella, Cora, Patty, and Paste, the latter of which is a fucking beast with a ridiculous 467 batting average and 60 home runs. Watch out if you're ever going up against Jersey. The players all have unique attributes, which adds a small amount of strategy to the game when pitching instead of just lining up with a bunch of generic cookie-cutter pallet swaps, and the teams themselves have their own strengths and weaknesses based on their rosters, as some have better hitters, fielders, pitchers, etc. This adds more variety to the mix and provides some replay value to mess around with multiple teams as they have their own gameplay identities and not just a different color uniform. The players also have their own unique batting stances too. I mean, some of them are recycled to multiple players, but there's variety in there and it gives these made up players some personality. Especially the really unorthodox positions some of these guys put themselves in for their stances. Another humorous aspect is how the catcher's mitt completely separates itself from his stationary body to grab balls that are pitched way outside. The game implemented a behind the pitcher view, which was uncommon at the time. Some critics felt that this made it harder to gauge where the ball was going to end up, since it's not coming towards you, but I don't mind it. I don't think the pitches travel at a ludicrous speed or anything, and you get a good variety of locations to pitch and swing at. The controls are fluid, and certain players have the ability to charge the mound and attack the pitcher if they get clunked in the head with a bean ball. I guess some of them have a rage meter. Fielding could be a little better though due to the slow pace of it all, and even at a steady pace, it's not always easy to gauge where your outfielder is after a fly ball. But again, the controls are good, and it's easy to target the bases with the D-pad. The music is okay, it's just that there's only one song during gameplay. You have the option of playing a single game against a human or the computer, or a full season using a password system to save. Although they don't keep track of standings or anything like that, you just qualify for the World Series if you win enough games. Overall, it's a pretty fun game that's simple enough to easily pick up and play, and there's enough features and elements to keep it from being a generic two-dimensional baseball game. Bases Loaded 2 second season was released a year after its predecessor in both respective markets. It maintains the 12-team league of fictional teams with fictional players, has the same single game or pennant password mode, although now you can enter the date that the game is played for exhibition mode for some reason, so long as the game takes place any time between 1989 and 1993. Beyond that is out of the question. Unlike the original though, now you can change the lineup around, not just your starting pitcher. Another dynamic is the biorhythm feature that lets you monitor a player's mental and physical traits as they fluctuate throughout the game. That was a little much. They could have simplified that with a basic health meter or something that's always on display so you don't have to go pausing the game all the time to check in on how your pitcher's doing. Ambitious, but unnecessary. Another new quirk is the perspective of the field. Instead of the traditional behind the plate view, the camera is staged along either the first base or third base line, depending on which team is batting. I don't hate it, but I don't really get it either. There was nothing wrong with the original. Was this just an excuse to say the game had more updates? Because aside from that, there's not really a lot added. You can dive now, but you don't stretch out any further than normal. It's almost like you're just putting on the brakes. It's similar to how the players slide significantly slower than they run who already are slow enough as it is despite being a notch or two faster than the original, but they shouldn't dive or slide noticeably slower than they run. A parallel universe contains these physics. Once again, the music loops all the way through the game, and although there are now two different tunes playing depending on who's at bat, they're also shorter, so you're actually getting more repetition, not to mention that the music sucks. It's not so much the songs themselves, but the tone and effects they chose is grating. After nine innings, you're pissed. After an entire season, you've gone insane. So this is one of those games that the mute button accompanied by your own choice of music is recommended. I'm actually kind of surprised they didn't just recycle the same music from the original. The title screen is a recycled theme, so why not? Despite the fact that it sounds like I'm shitting all over this game, I'm not. It's still fun in general, it's just that most of the positives were already mentioned in the original, and the updates were hit or miss, no pun intended.
Spaces Loaded 3 was released in 1990 in Japan and 1991 in North America. You'll notice that the title screen has a new and downgraded version of the original theme song, as well as a much revamped layout. Plus they switched from Roman to modern numerals, so does that mean the game is going to see an overhaul? Well, like its predecessors, you have 12 fictional teams, all with fictional players, they all have unique attributes and stances, and you can customize your lineup. The updates and revisions include a choice of three different ballparks to choose from. New York, Chicago, or LA. I guess everyone else in the fucking league has to go on the road to play at a neutral site at best. The parks all have their own unique dimensions, but they're not drastic enough of a difference to really stand out from each other. The batting screen looks about the same, but you can now adjust your position in the batter's box horizontally, and they speed things up a bit by having the catcher toss the ball back quicker than in previous games, and now the mitt isn't detached from his body, but there is a delay now with swinging the bat. It's not off by much, but in a baseball game, that split second difference is highly noticeable, which is a real testament to baseball games in general with good controls. You have to get that shit airtight, or it'll be awkward. But this pales in comparison to the awkwardness of the fielding. Bases Loaded 2's baseline perspective was a little odd, but it didn't break the game. There was nothing really wrong with it. This outfield perspective, however, is garbage. It's completely ass backwards and misleads you into throwing to the wrong base due to the flip of the screen. As George Carlin once said, baseball is the only sport that appears backwards in a mirror, which pretty much says everything I need to about that. You can get used to it, yes. Thankfully, they didn't maintain the old configuration with the new flip field. But even when you do get used to it, it's like you have to pay attention and make sure you don't follow through with every instinct you've ever developed playing baseball video games and throw to the opposite base you intend. The map of the diamond during an at-bat has the bases flipped too, which doesn't help to clear anything up when you're pitching. On top of that, you'll have a hard time finding your fielder in time to catch the ball due to the way the camera follows the ball. It's much worse than in the previous installments, mainly due to the fast pace. I take back anything I said about the slow pace of the last two games. Sure, you can now dive and leap for catches and make actual progress when doing so, but that doesn't make up for it. To make matters worse, they took out the pennant mode, and replaced it with a system that gives you a score based on different categories, tallying everything up for a score from 1 to 100, even though you can actually exceed this by achieving bonus scores. It's just as broken as football's quarterback rating system. This wouldn't be bad as a bonus feature, but subbing it in place of the season mode was stupid. I think this was kind of like some of the features of Bases Loaded 2, how they wanted to make changes just for the sake of change and not for the benefit of the game. The fourth Bases Loaded game, released in 1991 in Japan and 93 in North America, was the final game of the series on the NES. As per tradition, there are 12 teams, fictional players with their own attributes, yada yada yada. People must have been pissed about the removal of the pennant mode, as they brought that back for this game. But you know what they didn't take away? The fucking backwards perspective in the outfield! I guess they figured if it's broken, don't fix it. So at this point, half of the games in the series use this atrocious angle. It really breaks the game. I mean, is it really any wonder why you don't see this shit in any other baseball game? You figure they would have learned that lesson after the third installment. Your first clue that things weren't getting any better is the title screen. Same music as Bases Loaded 3. That's a bad omen. And when you look at it, it's not really that much different from its predecessor at all. Yeah, there's the now aforementioned return of the pennant mode, the swinging delay isn't as bad, and you can now move the batter vertically in the box as well as horizontally. But is that really enough? This is the fourth game of the series. At this point, all the flaws should have been tweaked, and we'd be at the perfect NES baseball game by now. Instead, the series peaked right off the bat, no pun intended, and then swiftly declined in the middle. The original is a good, solid game that's worth playing and owning. If you're building up a collection, then that's the only reason to buy all four of them. Just don't bother playing three or four. And that wraps up this edition of Aqualung's Game Reviews. See you next time.